welcome back to Lecture Highlights, where we try to explain the most important key concepts in economics as quickly, simply and intuitively as we possibly can. In this Lecture Highlight video, we'll be covering the key concepts of marginal cost and marginal benefit in the context of consumer decision making, and we'll be showing why economists tell us we should use these marginal cost and marginal benefit values when we're deciding how much of a product we should be buying or how much of any activity at all we should be doing. So we can use marginal analysis to tell us how many chocolate bars I should buy at the supermarket every single week. Or alternatively, I can use it to show how many times I should go to the cinema or to a football game each month. Essentially what we're doing when we introduce marginal analysis is we're extending our understanding of cost-benefit analysis. So cost-benefit analysis tells us we should only do something or buy something if the benefit is greater than the cost. But marginal analysis then takes this one step further. And rather than saying, should we do something or should we buy something? It tells us how much should we do or how much should we buy? And essentially economists tell us we should always buy more of a product or do more of any activity if the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. But what does that really mean and what is the intuition? How do we calculate our marginal benefit and how do we calculate our marginal cost? These are the key ideas that we're going to cover in this lecture highlight video. So let's begin then by considering some of the most important definitions. So whenever you see the word marginal, Essentially, you can just substitute that in your head for the word extra. So when you're talking about the idea of marginal cost, this is just the additional cost that I would have to pay to buy an additional unit of a product or to do slightly more of any activity. So really, if I'm in the supermarket and chocolate bars sell for a price of one pound, the marginal cost of each extra chocolate bar that I buy then is just equal to that price of one pound. Similarly, the marginal benefit just tells us what is the extra benefit that I gain from consuming an additional chocolate bar. So imagine you're in the supermarket then and you're deciding how many chocolate bars should you buy and you've already got four of them in your trolley. What would be the extra benefit of buying a fifth bar of chocolate? Well, that would be your marginal benefit. And this brings us on to a key concept in economics, which is called diminishing marginal benefit. So essentially all that means is once we've got more of a product, we tend to value extra units of that product slightly less. So if I'm sat at home and I decide to eat a chocolate bar, I might get a really high benefit from that first bar. But once I've already had 10, the extra benefit that I gain from an 11th bar on that particular day is likely to be much, much lower than the value I placed on the first bar. So now that we understand marginal cost and marginal benefit, how do we calculate these values and apply them to our decision making? So imagine you're on holiday and you're sat on the beach and it's really, really warm and you really need to cool down. And you notice that only a couple of meters away, there's an ice cream stand selling ice cream for £2.50. And you need to decide how many ice creams should you buy on that particular day. So imagine that you don't really mind walking a couple of meters just to collect the ice cream. There's not really much effort there. In that case, the only cost to you every time you increase your consumption of ice creams by one unit is just given by the price of every extra ice cream. So if I buy one ice cream, my extra cost is just the price of £2.50. If I buy a second ice cream, my extra cost of that second ice cream is again another £2.50. So in this example, my marginal cost of every extra ice cream that I could buy is just equal to £2.50. So the first one, it cost me £2.50. The second one, an extra £2.50 for the second one. The third one, an extra £2.50 for the third one. This is the idea of our marginal cost of an additional unit of the product. What about my marginal benefit? Well, to calculate the benefit, we need to use this kind of mental auction process to work out our maximum willingness to pay for each of these ice creams. So think about the very first ice cream. What would you be willing to pay for that very first ice cream? So we can do this using that mental auction, start at a price of 50 pence and keep increasing the price until you reach the maximum price you're willing to pay. 
So imagine this auction in your head goes up and up and up to a maximum value of five pounds. That's the maximum price that you pay for the first ice cream of the day. Now that represents your marginal benefit from that first ice cream, just the extra benefit that you gain from consuming that unit of the product. Now imagine you had one ice cream and you're deciding, should I have a second ice cream? So what would the marginal benefit be of the second ice cream? Well, I really like ice cream, but generally if I've already had one, I value a second one slightly less than the first one because of this idea of diminishing marginal benefit. So if we repeat that auction process in our head, maybe I get to a maximum willingness to pay, so a marginal benefit of only three pounds for the second unit. And then after I've had two ice creams, the marginal benefit of a third ice cream is gonna be even lower. So imagine that's one pound, that's the maximum price I'd be willing to pay for a third ice cream. And then the fourth ice cream, after I've already had three of them, the marginal benefit is only 50p. So it's dropped then from a marginal benefit of five pounds for the first ice cream, right the way down to 50 pence for the fourth ice cream because of diminishing marginal benefit. But now economists tell us we should only consume if the marginal benefit of each extra unit is greater than the marginal cost. So why is that? Well, essentially, if I buy the first ice cream, the marginal benefit is five pounds and the marginal cost is only two pounds 50. So that means that I'm giving up two pounds 50 in cash for a product that I value at five pounds. So I'm making myself better off by making this transaction and the net benefit I receive from that first ice cream is equal to the difference between the marginal benefit of five pounds and the marginal cost of two pounds 50. So I gain a net benefit on that first ice cream equal to two pounds 50 of value. The second ice cream, my marginal benefit is only three pounds and the marginal cost is again two pounds 50. So I'm definitely willing to buy the second ice cream because I'm giving up resources, i.e. my cash, that I value at two pounds 50 for a product that I value at three pounds. And I'm making a net benefit from that transaction equal to that difference of 50 pence. Now, should I buy a third ice cream? Well, in this case, my marginal benefit is only one pound and my marginal cost is two pounds 50. So if I buy this additional ice cream, it means that I'm giving up two pounds 50 in cash that I value at two pounds 50 for a product I only value at one pound. So I'd be making myself worse off if I engage in that transaction and I'd essentially be reducing the value of my happiness by a value of £1.50, the difference between the £1 and the £2.50 marginal cost of that ice cream. Similarly, for the fourth ice cream, my marginal benefit is 50 pence. It doesn't make sense for me to pay £2.50 for a product that I only value at 50 pence. So the key idea then is we use these marginal benefit and marginal cost to decide the optimal quantity that we should buy, which in this example is only two units of the product. So the key idea is I buy more of a product if the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost because I'm making myself better off. I'm giving up cash for a product that I value more than I value the cash. If the marginal benefit is less than my marginal cost, I shouldn't buy those units because I'd be giving up cash that I value more than the value of the product that I'd be receiving. Now, rather than conveying all of this information using words or using a table, economists find it much more convenient to instead replicate all of this information using a diagram. So what we've got now in the diagram is the total quantity of ice creams that the consumer could buy measured on the horizontal axis, so one, two, three, or four. And then on the vertical axis, we've got the marginal benefit values and the marginal cost. So for that first ice cream then, the marginal benefit was five pounds, the marginal cost is two pounds 50, and the net benefit from buying the ice cream was two pounds 50. The second ice cream, the marginal benefit is three pounds, marginal cost is two pounds 50, the net benefit has now reduced to 50 pence. But that's the optimal point for this consumer to stop at because the third ice cream, the marginal benefit is below my marginal cost. Now to really understand the intuition, as to why it's optimal for a consumer to only buy more of a product if the marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost and buy less of a product if marginal benefit is smaller than marginal cost. It can be really helpful to have a look at what the consumer is trying to do in this decision-making process. 
So whenever we buy any products or decide to do an activity, we're doing this because we're trying to make ourselves as happy as we can possibly be. Or more formally, economists say, we're trying to maximise the difference between the total benefit we gain from consuming that quantity of products minus the total cost we have to pay to pay for those products. So let's explore then the relationship between marginal cost and marginal benefit and total cost and total benefit. So total cost then for any quantity of ice creams just measures the total amount I have to pay to buy those ice creams. So if I buy one ice cream, it costs me £2.50. If I buy two ice creams, the total cost is £5. If I buy three ice creams, the total cost is £7.50. And four ice creams, the total cost is £10. Now this might sound really simple, but what really is happening here is we're adding on the marginal cost of the additional unit to calculate our total cost. So to go from a total cost of one ice cream to two ice creams, we're just adding on that marginal cost of £2.50 for the second ice cream to bring our total cost to £5. Now let's do the same with total benefit. So the total benefit from the first ice cream is just £5, that marginal benefit that I gained from the first ice cream. The total benefit of two ice creams, well we just add on the marginal benefit of the second ice cream, which was £3, so our total benefit is now £8. And the total benefit of three ice creams is £9, our total benefit of four ice creams is £9.50. So now we know the relationship between total cost, total benefit, marginal cost and marginal benefit. And what we can now see is that we maximise the difference between total benefit and total cost by only consuming when marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost. Because my total benefit minus total cost when I buy one ice cream is £2.50. It increases to £3 if I buy a second ice cream and it decreases again to £2.50 if I buy a third ice cream. So the highest point then where I maximise my happiness or more formally I maximise the difference between total benefit and total cost occurs at the point where I buy two ice creams where I stop buying as soon as the marginal benefit is no longer larger than my marginal cost. Again, we can show all of this information now using a diagram. So below our original diagram, I've drawn the same horizontal axis measuring the total quantity of ice creams a consumer could buy. And now on the vertical axis, we've got the difference between total benefit and total cost. So we can clearly see that if I buy one ice cream, that difference is £2.50. If I buy two ice creams, that difference is £3. And if I buy three ice creams, it goes back down again to £2.50. So really, the intuition is we're trying to get to that maximal point where we're maximising the difference between total benefit and total cost. And in order to do this, we should only consume if the marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost. Now, if I'm sat on the beach and I'm really comfy and I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to go and buy an extra ice cream, Maybe I've also got an additional cost of my effort that I have to put in to go and walk. If it's actually not nearby, it's quite a walk away. So how does that impact our decision making? Well, imagine the ice cream shop is so far away that if there was no benefit at all to you in terms of getting an ice cream, you would need to be paid one pound in order to go and walk that distance and just come back again to your sunbed on the beach. Formally, that one pound represents your cost of effort. So now if you're deciding should you buy an ice cream, the marginal cost is no longer just the price of £2.50, but you also have to pay the cost of your effort, which is equal to £1. So now the total marginal cost then, if you like, in this example, has increased from £2.50 to £3.50 to factor in the idea that you have a cost of your effort. So now let's try to understand how this impacts our decision making. Well, the marginal benefit of that first ice cream is £5. The marginal cost is £3.50. We should definitely still buy it because we get a net benefit even after we've paid for the product and taken away the cost of actually exerting effort to go and get it, equal to that difference of £1.50. But should we buy a second ice cream? Well, we said that the marginal benefit of the second ice cream is only £3.00. And now the marginal cost has increased to £3.50, so we wouldn't want to do that. Why? Because if we do that, then we're essentially giving up cash and our effort, 
which we value a lot, lot more than the value of that second ice cream that we could consume. So this is how we can also adapt the model to take into account different types of marginal cost, not just the price of the product. An important question is what would happen then if the marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost? So suppose that my marginal benefit for a product is equal to £10 and the marginal cost of buying that product is also equal to £10. Well, in that case, I'm indifferent between buying the product or not. So if I decide to buy the product, I give up £10 worth of cash for a product that I value at £10. So really, I'm not making myself better off or worse off by engaging in that transaction. So this implies that I'm indifferent between buying a product or not buying a product if the marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. And that's why you'll often hear economists say you should always consume up until the point where your marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. In the previous example, we implicitly assumed that if I decided to go and spend my time buying an ice cream, then I had no alternative use for that 10 or 15 minutes that I spend going and buying the ice cream and bringing it back and eating it. But this generally won't be the case. So instead of spending that time going and buying an ice cream, if I'm on holiday, I could instead of spend that time reading a book or spend that time in the swimming pool. So there's some lost benefits for these alternative activities that I have to forego in order to buy an ice cream. Alternatively, the way we can think about this is that there's an additional cost that we have to pay in addition to the cost of the product and the cost of my effort to get the product. We also have to pay the cost that I can't do any of the alternative activities that I might have done if I didn't decide to spend my time buying ice cream. More formally, economists refer to this as an opportunity cost, but how do we calculate opportunity costs and how do they impact our decision making? These are the key questions that we're going to come on to in our next lecture highlight.